everybody and welcome to the Football Philosophy Channel and it's Friday lunchtime, the day after we've qualified for the Europa League final in, in, in Gdansk um, with a 3-2 uh, a defeat in Rome. Uh, what a game that was, we got there in the end, uh, but uh, it, it was a bit of a thriller really. We got beat 3-2 but it was a very scrappy affair and Rome, Rome had plenty of chances, plenty of chances. Right from the start they were, they were creating chances. In fact, I lost count. I think they might have had eight or nine clear cut chances. But don't, you know, look, we were 6 2 up. Uh, even if you have eight or nine clear cut chances, you don't often convert most of them. You know, might, you might do well to convert half of them. They managed to convert three. Obviously, we were always going to be a threat on the break. Edison Cavani got two cracking goals and uh, could have had one or two more. So, so we did get there in the end. It was a little bit scary, just a little bit worrying with about. About 25, 30 minutes to go. The aggregate score at the time was 7-4. And they had two really good close-in chances. Um, that if I remember right, they were slightly lucky saves. He made some, he made some good saves to Hayer, but a couple of times he was just really stood on his line as the ball flashed across the six-yard box and they managed to get something on it and deflect it towards the goal. It just seemed to strike David De Gea. One, one occasion it just struck him uh, in, uh, on the leg. And bounced away, but had one of those two chances got in, uh, gone in, and it, it had been seven five with twenty or seven five. You couldn't make it up. Uh, seven five, it would have been on aggregate with a uh, with twenty five or thirty minutes to go, and it could have been a little bit nervy. Alas, it didn't go in, and uh, before you knew it, Cavani banged one in at the other end, and it became it, be, it became eight four, where it could have been seven five at one point. Uh, and, and the game was the game was put to bed. Uh, it, at, at times, if I'm honest, United were a little bit of a shambles last night. I've, I've got to be honest. But we've got there in the end. Uh, the final uh, is in Gdansk in Poland at the uh, at the Lechia Stadium. I've had a look at the uh, at, uh, at Gdansk. I've also had a good look at the Villarreal team that beat that beat Arsenal. Um, but let's let's cover uh, Gdansk first. The stadium's got a capacity. It's the Energy Stadium in Gdansk. It's got a capacity of forty one thousand six hundred, uh, which isn't really relevant at the minute because of COVID. Uh, but it's got a record attendance, not for a football game, uh, but the record attendance there is recorded as a Justin Limb uh, Justin Timberlake concert of a uh, just under forty one thousand. Uh, but for this final, for COVID reasons. They reckon between 9,500 and 10, according to different reports, between 9,500 and 10,000 fans are going to be allowed in, with roughly 2,000 tickets going to the two com each of the two competing clubs. Uh, it was a host city uh, of the 2012 Euros that was jointly held in the Ukraine and Poland, and it hosted the Sp uh, Spain versus Republic of Ireland game, and it hosted Germany versus Greece. Uh, in the quarter final, the city itself um, it's got a population of five hundred thousand. It's it's on the Baltic coast. It's northern uh, northern Poland, and uh, the climate there in May is very very similar to Manchester. Very similar to Manchester. So you know it's just a look at a draw. You, anybody who's from the Manchester area, you know that in May, if we're lucky, we could get sunshine. But if we're not very lucky, it could be cold and it could be raining. So so that remains to be seen. I'm hoping to go out there. Well, I am. I'm definitely planning to go out there myself. So I'm I'm praying for a bit, a bit of good weather in, le in late May uh, in Gdansk. As I say, it could easily be raining and cold, though, just like it could be in Manchester uh, at that time. Uh, the COVID rules in Poland at the moment uh, are very similar to very similar to the UK. Uh, you need to wear a mask outdoors as well as indoors at the moment there, but that could change that their traffic light out of uh, out of COVID a little bit similar to ours. Our, our next our next step is the seventeenth of May. Theirs is the fifteenth of May, uh, so things could change there on the fifteenth of May. Uh, at the moment. Um, food and drink can only be served to you outdoors just like it can in the UK hopefully that changes on the 15th of May because if the weather is a little bit inclement when we go out there um, we'd like to be going indoors for food and drink or perhaps we'd like to be going indoors so let's see if that changes by then um, our opponents in the final uh, Villarreal 
Uh, I was quite surprised that Arsenal didn't manage to beat them 1-0. That's all they needed to do last night, beat them 1-0 or 2-1 to take it to extra time. But they got a 0-0 draw, very well organised. Unai Emery is in charge. I'm sure Arsenal fans will be uh, devastated that he's come back already and, and knocked them out of a European trophy. Uh, but, the, you know, they, they must have been very well organised last night to get a 0-0 draw at the Emirates. And I'm sure I'm sure that's what, uh, that's what we can expect uh, when we play them in the final, there are there are th Villarreal Real will be the third Spanish outfit that we've played uh, in this tournament. Uh, we've obviously uh, already beaten uh, we've beaten Granada, who are eighth in La Liga. We've beaten Real Sociedad, who are fifth in La Liga, and uh, Villarreal are one place and one point behind Granada at the moment. I wouldn't put too much uh, emphasis on the fact that we beat. Real Sociedad comfortably 4-0 in the first leg. We beat them 4-0 on aggregate. Uh, and uh, Villarreal are one point behind Real Sociedad. Uh, they're in sixth, in sixth place in the table at the moment. Look, they, they really came out at us, Real Sociedad. I think on another day, if they were a little bit more cagey about it and played a little bit more defensively, which I think Villarreal will do, I think Real Sociedad, I wouldn't put too much thought into the, the fact that we've beaten those easily. I really wouldn't. Villarreal will play it a little bit more cagely. I'm sure they will uh, more defensively. So uh, I expect them to be more organised and not to come flying out of the traps at us as Real Sociedad did. And obviously it's a one-off game as well and, and, and not a two-legged game. I've had a look at the players uh, that, that turned out for Villarreal uh, against Arsenal. In goals, he had Geronimo Rulli. Uh, he's a 28-year-old Argenti Argentinian who's got two caps for Argentina. Uh, they, do, uh, they, they do similar to us, uh, Villarreal, where they do change the goalkeepers. Uh, the first choice keeper in the league is Sergio Asensio, who's played 33 league games and only one Europa League game this season. Whereas uh, Geronimo Rulli, who played, played both legs against uh, against Arsenal, has not played a single league game this season. So it'll be interesting to see. You would imagine that Rulli would keep his place. He's played all, all but one of the, of the Europa League ties. Uh, at right back in the first leg, I've looked at the full lineup from the first leg and then the second leg. There was only two changes from the first leg to the second leg. Uh, at right back in the first leg, they had Juan Foyth, who's uh, on loan, uh, on loan from Spurs. Um, bit of a bit of a irony there in that he's on. Not only is he on loan from Spurs, and Spurs have got knocked out of a trophy that he's now reached the final of, uh, but he's also helped him uh, helped. Uh, Villarreal to knock out Spurs' dearest rivals, obviously, uh, Arsenal, which is a, a bit of a strange one. But uh, he did pull his hamstring. One fight, he's, he's, he's 23, by the way. He's played 16 league games and 11 Europa League games this season um, for Villarreal. He's got 11 caps for Argentina, uh, but he pulled his hamstring in the first leg. So uh, the, it, it, his time... Uh, that he's been given where they think he'll be back is roughly around the time of the Europa League final. I doubt if he'd be fit to play, though. Uh, I would imagine he, he won't have had a game. He might just be fit to play, but having I mean, not played a game yet. Uh, anybody who's watched my watched my shows regularly will always know that I always say, will, will, will know that I always say, you build from the back. You've got to get your back right. The most important players in your team are your keeper and your two centre-backs, and that's where you start. And looking at the two centre-backs, uh, I do believe they've got a great basis for a, for a, for a, good, uh, a good strong... Uh, for being a good strong outfit, which obviously they've proved to be in the Europa League. Uh, they've got Pau Torres, 6 foot 4 inch, 24-year-old uh, centre-back. He's got seven caps for Spain. He's played 163 games for Villarreal. Been linked with United and lots of other top clubs. Uh, he's one centre-back that played in both legs against Arsenal. And his, and his partner, uh, Raul Albiol, uh, experienced 35-year-old centre-back. 81 games for Real Madrid, 180 games for Napoli, and now 67 games for Villarreal. Uh, and he's also got 56 caps for Spain. Uh, he was on the bench when Spain won the World Cup. Uh, 
but as I say, he's 35 years of age, not old for the centre back. It really isn't. Lots of our fans think 30. Lots of our fans think 32 is old. 35 is not too old for the centre back. Uh, Albiol's played 42 games, and Pau Torres has played 40 games this season uh, as a centre back pairing for Villarreal. So that's clearly the strong base that you need uh, to, to go forward from. At left back in both legs, Alfonso Pedreza, uh, 25 years of age. Uh, he's, uh, he's had a few loan spells, including Leeds United, uh, Alaves and Real, Real Betis. He's not been capped by Spain, but he played both legs at left full back. Uh, in midfield, Samuel Chukweza, 21 year old. Uh, already only 21 already played 91 times for Villarreal and he's got 19 caps for uh, for Nigeria so he's wide on the right in midfield played in both legs uh, Danny Parejo 32 year old central midfield player played both legs uh, 382 games for Valencia uh, and he's got four caps for Spain uh, he's in his, I think he's in his first or his second season with Villarreal. Uh, Essien Capui started the first game in central midfield. You'll remember him from Watford. 167 times he played for Watford and played for Spurs before Watford. He's also got seven caps for France. Capui's 32 now. He got a red card in the first leg and uh, missed the second leg. There was just two changes from the first leg to the second leg. Uh, one fourth, the right back pulled his pulled his hamstring in the first leg, and Etienne Capoue got a red card. So obviously he missed missed the second leg, but that obviously will be finished with now by the time the final comes around. So Capoue uh, could play in the second leg uh, on the left wing, left wide left in midfield. Mig, Miguel, uh, Miguel Trigueros. 373 games, he's 29 years old, he's played 373 games uh, for for Villarreal, so he's obviously a big favourite there, he's played 49 games this season for them, he has not been capped by Spain, but he's obviously a regular, regular starter uh, for Villarreal, wide on the left. Up front, they've got a pairing of uh, Paco Alsaka, a 27-year-old who's played 37 games for Barcelona in his career and 23 times for Borussia Dortmund. Um, he's played he's played 37 games for Villarreal this season. He's also got 19 full caps for Spain. So that's a 27-year-old striker. And his partner, uh, Gerard Moreno, uh, has got 46 goals in 99 games. Uh, for Villarreal, he's got 176 uh, career goals. It's his second spell with Villarreal. Um, he's uh, also got he's also got 10 caps for Spain, and he's got 41 goals in 99 games in this spell with Villarreal. Sorry, that's sorry, I've made a mistake there. He's got 26 goals in 41 games. I got the 41 in the wrong place. He's got 26 goals in 41 games this season. He's played 99 games overall for them on in this spell. But he's got 26 goals in 41 games this season. That's a Gerard Moreno, a striker who is 29 years of age. Um the two changes for the second leg, uh, plenty of cover at right back really, or, or thoroughly decent cover I should say. Uh, I think this is a good point as to how, how, how they rate Juan Foy, who they've got on loan from Spurs, because uh, Mario Gaspar, the 30-year-old right back, is the club captain, so he's only 30 still. He's played over 400 games for Villarreal, and he's got three uh, three caps for Spain. Seems to have lost his place to Juan Foy, but... Uh, with Juan Foyth's uh, uh, hamstring injury, he played a good chunk of the game in the first game against Arsenal. And he, then he also played the full game in, in the second leg uh, at the Emirates. And then Francis Coquelin, ex-Arsenal player, 160 games for Arsenal. Uh, also had a spell with Valencia where he played 89 games. And he's now in his first season with Villarreal where he's played... Tw uh, where he's played 28 games for Villarreal this season. He's a 29-year-old central midfield player who Arsenal fans will know only too well. So those are the two players who came in for the second leg. Mario Gasper, the club captain at right-back, and Francis Coquelin in central midfield. And then one other player that I'm going to mention, Alberto Moreno, a substitute left-back. 
who came on in both games, by the way, he was used in both games. You'll remember him from Liverpool. He played 140 games uh, for Liverpool and has also got, he's 28 years of age, by the way, and he's got four caps for Spain. So, looking at that, they, they look, to me, they look very solid defensively. They're obviously doing decently in La Liga. Uh, they've knocked Arsenal out. You cannot take them lightly. Arsenal, you know, only needed one goal against them at the Emirates. The two centre backs are obviously, look, you don't even need to watch them play. You know, the experienced 35 year old who's played it, he's, he's got a World Cup winner's medal. He's in the squad. He's also got two European Championship medals. He was in both of those squads when Spain won that. Um, how many caps has he got? I forgot now, 40-odd caps or 50-odd caps for Spain. And then, obviously, Pau Torres next to him as well. So, they're, they're solid in central defence. Uh, they, they, you know, they're going to be well organised. It is not going to be uh, an easy game. Anybody who's thinking it's going to be... Look, I might have egg on my face. I've just said, when I was speaking about the United's game last night, there's no truer statement than goals change games. If United managed to get an early goal in that game, which can happen, you can get an early goal even luckily. That can happen in football. If we manage to get an early goal in that game, we could end up winning it comfortably. But if we don't, I think it could be on a knife edge. It could, uh, it could be a thriller. I don't I personally. I'm definitely expecting a tough game. Not expecting a walkover. I'm definitely going over there. Really looking forward to that. Really looking forward to that trip. Uh, back to the league football. Um, obviously, the, the Premier League, in their wisdom, have, uh, have crammed this Liverpool game in, into next week, uh, along along with the Leicester City game that we've already got in midweek next week. So we've got we've got Aston Villa on Sunday, we've got Leicester City on Tuesday, and then we've got Liverpool on Thursday. So I'm going to have a busy week of watching football and also an extra busy week on on YouTube. Uh, I will be back tomorrow with a rating, the rating show from last night's last night's three two defeat in Rome, and also a, a, a preview of the Aston Villa game and seeing what we think the lineup might be. Be very interesting to see how Oli juggles his team around this week. This week, because it really is going to have to have to rotate, um, you know, in, in a big way, isn't it? Surely, with uh, what is it? Three three games in five days. Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Three games in five days. Surely we're going to see players. You'd expect that you might even see players like Bruno and and Harry Maguire get a rest. Who who never ever get a rest. Wan Bissaka very rarely gets a rest. But can they all play? Can any of them play three games in five days? It does seem a bit bit of a big a bit of a big ask to me. Uh, but as ever, I look forward to every game. I'm looking forward to the Villa game now. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with a rating, the rating show. And also, I'll be back with a separate show uh, previewing the Aston Villa game and seeing what I think the lineup will be. I hope you've enjoyed that show. If you've enjoyed that show, please subscribe. Please tell all your friends. If you didn't enjoy it, don't tell anybody. Keep stoned.